The ensuing war between the United States and the Communist North lasted until 1975 when North Vietnam took over Saigon and renamed it Ho Chi Minh City. With a population of almost 8 million people, Saigon is the largest city in Vietnam. It's also known as Vietnam's commercial capital. It was late afternoon when we arrived and met our tour guide, the friendly and lively Tracy. The most prominent area in the city is around Dong Khoi Street in District 1. This is also where our hotel, the Central Palace, was located. The Central Palace is an impressive hotel with spacious rooms and an open-air swimming pool on the 14th floor. We were keen to explore the city on foot and entered the hustle and bustle in search for a place to dine. The traffic in this part of Saigon is amazing. We entered a sushi restaurant and enjoyed a mouth-watering dinner at a reasonable price. traffic was non-stop and we decided to rather view the city life from our hotel's top floor. After breakfast at the hotel, the first item on the agenda was a visit to Kuchi. Kuchi is a small town about 15 kilometers from Saigon. Today, it's a major tourist attraction due to the underground tunnel system that was used during the Vietnam War. The tunnels were a key part of guerrilla warfare during the war and played a major role in defeating the American soldiers. Tunnel entrances were so small and well camouflaged with leaves and branches that they were often invisible to enemy eyes. Brave and small tourists are allowed to enter the narrow tunnel entrances. Entrances and fake entrances were generally guarded with ingenious but deadly booby traps which caused death and severe injuries to many American soldiers. This shooting range is right next to one of the biggest tourist attractions in Vietnam. It does, however, provide appropriate background sound to the tunnel area. From Cu Chi, we went on a long and difficult ride to visit the Mekong Delta. The mighty Mekong River meanders along for 4,500 kilometers before ending here in the ocean. The river splits into multiple tributaries with several islands in between, creating a unique area known as the Mekong Delta. There was even time for a manicure on the boat ride between the islands. It was time for lunch. We stopped at the Diem Pong restaurant on an island. Our menu was pre-arranged and we were served with this interesting Vietnamese dish, which we thoroughly enjoyed.
It put us all in high spirits to explore more of the Delta. Next stop was a bee farm. And one box is they have one uh, queen bee. Every uh, year, Mekong River gives me a lot of soil. With your green tea, with yeah. the bee pollen. Yeah. We had a cup of delicious honey tea. And walked through the adjoining nursery. And then we met these guys. It was late on a Saturday afternoon and they were clearly enjoying themselves with a few local beers. Although we could not understand each other's language, they made us join the party and soon we were on equal spirits. Eventually we left with a spring in our step. There was more to see and we were entertained by this musician using his self-made Don Bo, a traditional single-stringed Vietnamese instrument. Exhausted after a full day, we were thankful to get a lift on a small horse cart. <laughs> to leave the island back to our boat, we had to endure a nervous ride on small boats through narrow dark channels. <laughs> On the way back to Saigon, Tracy entertained us in our minibus with her karaoke talent. It rubbed off and Rosa participated heartily. It was our last night in Saigon, so we had to find another restaurant in District 1. Before leaving, we went to visit the Independence Palace, set in well-maintained and spacious grounds. It's a prominent symbol of Vietnam's political history. Originally the residence of the French Governor General, it was later occupied by the South Vietnamese President and renamed as the Presidential Palace in 1962. After the war, when South Vietnam surrendered to the North in 1975, the North Vietnamese troops took over Saigon and the palace gates were knocked down by a North Vietnamese army tank. The photograph showing this invasion became emblematic of the reunification of Vietnam. Existing alongside the historical buildings, high-rise hotels, shopping malls, 
and chic restaurants are ancient pagodas and colonial buildings. The General Post Office is one of the most handsome French colonial buildings in the city. The Notre Dame Cathedral is built of locally quarried stone and covered with red ceramic tiles. Our last lunch in Vietnam at the Viet Heritage Restaurant. Cam on and Tambit.